Thank you for joining me. My name is Justin Olmsted, and I'm the Turf Product Manager with Precision Laboratories. And just wanted to take a few moments and talk with you a little bit about a new and innovative product called Inflow. It's a granular soil surfactant that was formulated for use specifically for infield skin maintenance. During this presentation, we're going to talk quite a bit about water and how we can influence the performance of water to uh, enhance the playability and safety of your fields. And at Precision Laboratories, we really do believe that water is a precious resource and its management has a great impact on the performance of your, of your field and of your infield skins. So. Uh, with that, we'll talk a little bit about some of the challenges that field managers can face in terms of water. And really, those challenges are one of two things. Either you're too wet, which can really cause issues in terms of being able to maintain that field and get the equipment out there and get it to be a playable surface for your next game but also the safety aspect where if you do have that that wet surface that's more of like that peanut buttery consistency um, there's more potential for sliding you don't have very good cleat in and cleat out you could get clumps of of, of clay and infield mix stuck to the bottom which could become tripping hazards and so there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of issues in terms of having a field that is too wet likewise on the other end of the spectrum you could also have a field that's too dry. So if you're not able to hold moisture within that profile of your infield skin, you could have very dry hard pan areas, which again can become a hazard. Uh, you could skid much more easily with cleats. Uh, the playability is affected. You you don't if it's not uh, if the moisture level is not consistent across the infield skin, uh, the the ball skip off the infield can be different on different areas, whether whether it's wet or dry. So to, really making that uh, soil profile more uniform in terms of water retention really does help the playability and the safety aspect of that field as well. So to improve the performance of that infield skin, uh, it becomes necessary to be able to move water down into the profile during a rain event or an irrigation cycle or if you're hand watering so that you can get the water off the surface and maintain uh, a playable area where there's no standing water or wet spots and also, once that water is in the profile, you want to make sure that you're able to spread it evenly throughout so that you can maintain a uniform uh, playability and condition throughout that entire uh, playing area. But once that water is being held there, there's also value in being able to hold it over time. So holding water over a longer period of time for those field managers that hand water their infield skins to get the 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 consistency that they want. Uh, it's it's not really feasible to go out and do that on a frequent basis. So if you're able to put down an application and hold that water in the soil profile for a longer period of time, that also produces some great benefits. And one of the challenges of achieving these conditions is actually water itself. Uh, like we like to say that water is kind of lazy. It always wants to follow the path of least resistance. So when it gets applied to a soil, it's going to find the biggest channel and the easiest path words downward and throughout the soil. And that can have a, a pretty uh, drastic effect on uniformity. And that can be shown here in this cross section of soil where uh, dye was added to water and then the water was poured across the top surface. And what you can see is that it's pretty uniform across that very top of the surface. But uh, when it starts moving downward, it, it finds the path of least resistance, which we like to call preferential flow. And just really is isolated to this one area and you're not getting good lateral distribution and uniformity of that water. Another aspect of water that's working against you in terms of uh, uniformity of distribution and 
and infiltration is surface tension, that film across the top of the water that holds it together in a droplet form. I think uh, one of the best uh, ways to visualize this is if you think back to your high school chemistry class, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people did an experiment where they took a dropper full of water and kept adding drops to the top of a penny. And, and it's remarkable how many drops you can add because the surface tension of water holds that droplet together before it starts to flow over the edges. And that's one of the, one of the characteristics of water Water that leads to preferential flow as well as impedes the even flow in, in distribution of water into and throughout the soil. So to improve the infiltration of water into and throughout the soil, it becomes necessary to reduce or break that surface tension in the water. And that's where surfactants come in. Uh, surfact the word surfactant itself is a description of how it functions, it, and it's basically three words put together, surface active agent, and all a surfactant is really is uh, a product that lowers surface tension between two liquids or between a liquid and a solid surface. And in general, most surfactants are constructed in the same basic way. You have a hydrophile or a head group that is water loving, it's attracted to water. And then you have a lipophile uh, tail or an oil loving tail that is attracted to organic matter. So those two performance aspects can be modified to uh, change the performance characteristics of soil surfactants. But in general, this is how a soil surfactant is constructed. To shed a little light on how soil surfactants reduce the surface tension of water, let's take a look at uh, the occurrence of surface tension itself. So let's think of this picture here as a water droplet. And at the, at the surface of that water droplet, the hydrogen and oxygen molecules of water are more strongly attracted to each other than the hydrogen and oxygen molecules of those molecules below it. So what you get is a stronger attraction to, to uh, each of those molecules at the surface, creating that film that holds that droplet together, like the picture that we saw of the water droplets on the penny. So to reduce the surface tension, you need to break those bonds. And that's where the surfactant molecule comes in. Those soil surfactant molecules break those natural occurring bonds between the water molecules and allow that water to more efficiently spread out and also allows it to more easily flow into smaller pore spaces in the soil. To illustrate how that happens, we did a quick little video in our lab where we took a petri dish full of hydrophobic soil. And what you'll see first is a pipette that puts a droplet of water on the soil. And notice when that droplet of water sits there, the surface tension is holding that droplet together into a nice round big drop. You can even see some material floating around on top. That's that film that's holding that water droplet together, the surface tension. And next you'll see a pipette that has a solution of water and a soil surfactant. And just by adding a small amount of soil surfactant, you're able to break that surface tension of the water droplet and promote better infiltration into the soil. And once it's in the soil, it also moves better laterally throughout for better uniformity. That improved lateral movement is important to overcome some of uh, the issues that you'll experience in soil as it relates to hydrophobicity. So uh, there are soils that will naturally repel water as, uh, as organic material begins to break down, it can form a coating on your uh, infield skin profile that will actually not allow water to flow in. And a lot of times we hear this referred to as localized dry spot because you can uh, water uh, an area and have uh, nice moist soil in one area and, and directly next to it, uh, 
it, the, the water won't penetrate and you're still left with that very dry hard pan uh, soil. So you want to make sure that you can get that water into and throughout that soil and that's what a soil surfactant does. It really does help improve the movement across those hydrophobic areas. And again, just to take a closer look at uh, hydrophobicity and how those organic coatings on the soil affect it, uh, you see that as some of the organic matter in your soil profile um, begins to uh, accumulate on those sand particles, uh, you see on the right hand side a nice, uh, a nice clean sand particle and on the left that organic that organic film that develops on the out, outside of it that is what's repelling the water in those areas so by reducing the surface tension of water you're able to get more water into those hydrophobic areas but again that lipophilic tail that that oil loving tail is seeking out those organic coatings to use as an attachment site and so it anchors that that soil surfactant molecule to that soil particle and once those soil surfactant molecules are evenly distributed through that soil and they're attaching on those sites, think of them as fingers that are grabbing water and pulling it in through the profile more uniformly. And then also holding it there over time so that your water is better utilized. And to better illustrate that, again, we did a quick video in the lab where we constructed two soil columns out of a, a sand peat mix. And on the left-hand side, uh, the soil column, you'll see an untreated uh, solution being poured over the top. So it's just water by itself. And then on the right, you see a pre-treated solution with soil surfactant. And notice how the soil surfactant treated water is being pulled through that soil profile. And that soil is able to better utilize that water. And on the left, you see again, preferential flow that we talked about where the water just drips down the side and it, and it leaches out. So the, by adding the soil surfactant, you're able to pull the water through that soil profile. So as you can see, there's a lot of great benefits to using the soil surfactants on infield skins. And that's why we formulated Inflow, our granular soil surfactant. It's manufactured specifically for uh, infield skin maintenance. And the soil surfactant blend in inflow really does help to maintain your moisture levels for a longer period of time. It helps to optimize your playing conditions by getting water off the surface faster and more evenly distributing it throughout the uh, soil profile for more uniform playing conditions. It also helps to improve your soil profile. The granular carrier that we applied the soil surfactant to uh, contains calcium and calcium really is a building block of soil health and does help improve your overall soil structure. And it's a very flexible product as well. It can also safely be used on your turf surfaces. Another flexible aspect of Inflow is its packaging and rate. It comes in a 50 pound bag. And if you're ordering in bulk, you can, you can get it by the pallet, which is, it comes with uh, 40 50 pound bags or 2000 pounds. And the rate is five pounds per 1000 square feet. That means one bag treats 10,000 square feet. And on average, most baseball infield skins are 10,000 square feet. So one bag will treat one baseball, uh, one baseball infield skin. And even for softball, which has a larger uh, infield area, a bag and a half to two bags will usually treat that at a five pound per thousand square foot rate. So it's pretty easy to uh, figure the rates for this product. I know for me, pictures really do help tell stories. So uh, throughout a number of different field trials that we've conducted over the past year, we've, able to, we've been able to capture a lot of great images in terms of the performance of inflow. And the two pictures that you're looking at here came from a softball facility that had four fields. The field on the left was thought to be his best draining field and the field on the right was thought to be his worst draining field. And so we took 
uh, inflow and treated his worst draining field at a rate of five pounds per thousand square feet. He had received uh, some rain uh, in a previous night and we came back out to see what the performance looked like and we're pretty surprised to see the results. So what you'll notice is on the left, uh, it's it's a much more, like we said, a, like a greasier peanut buttery consistency. And one of the ways this field manager judges whether he's able to maintain the field that day or not is he takes, he takes his foot and with uh, the tip, tips of his toes, he skids it into the soil profile. And if it makes a deep impression, it's it's too wet for him to maintain it. And on the untreated field that he thought was his best draining field, you'll notice that it's a much deeper impression than the one on the inflow treated field. And you can also see uh, some free moisture there at the tip of his toe mark. The infield treated, the inflow treated field was much firmer at the surface. The water was carried down into the profile and he was able to get out and maintain that field much sooner than he was the untreated field. And what you see here on, on this slide is from that same trial. And, and another point worth mentioning is that the soil profiles are the, the exact same makeup. It's a 70% sand, 30% clay uh, mixture. And, and even after he thought he was at a point where he could go maintain the untreated field, notice the tire tracks from the, uh, the Tyne Rake, the Sam Pro that, that he was using to maintain that area. Again, you get that much that much slicker surface, wetter surface with the untreated field and with the inflow treated field, notice how much drier it is at the surface uh, because of that soil surfactant's ability to reduce surface tension and carry moisture down and throughout the soil. We want to set the right expectation with inflow, so we developed a set of best management practices that starts with making sure that your your spreader is calibrated appropriately to give you the rate that you're intending to put out on your infield skin. And secondly, make sure that you're applying it to a dry surface. Uh, making sure that the surface is dry just ensures the performance potential of inflow and it gives you the infiltration and uniformity characteristics that you're looking for. Third. The infield can be dragged or tined before or after the application, and that just speaks to the flexibility of inflow. Uh, so you can spread it on your infield skin and, and then drag and tine it afterwards. And actually, that's how a lot of field managers prefer to do it because the granules almost disappear after the, after the, the dragging and the tining. And then they're just in the soil dormant, uh, awaiting irrigation to activate the chemistry. And that brings us to point four, where irrigation after the application is very important. And you want to make sure to get some overhead irrigation or, 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 or water with a hose to activate that chemistry because the performance is not activated until it comes in contact with moisture. So you want to, so you can either apply it before rainfall and wait for the rain or apply it and, and introduce some irrigation or, or, or use a hose to water it in afterwards. And five, use a water volume that sufficiently wets the profile to the desired moisture level. So if you have the ability to put some overhead irrigation on or use a hose to water it in, uh, follow the irrigation practices that you've been using. And what you'll find is you'll, you may even be able to uh, achieve the conditions you want using less water because you're going to improve the infiltration into, into that uh, infield skin surface. You'll get much less runoff and, and you may even find that you can get some water savings there. Six, use as a preventative measure before rainfall or irrigation to reduce standing water. So if you don't have the ability to water directly after the application, try to time it in front of a rain event. And that rain will activate the chemistry and initiate the performance that you're looking for from inflow. Seven, do not apply to standing water. Uh, again, this is about setting expectations. So. This inflow isn't a product that if you already have standing water or a puddle, you can't throw a ha handful of inflow in and expect it to go away. That's not how that's not how this product works. It works much better as a preventative measure. In eight, apply every three weeks for the most consistent results. So the, to, to make sure that you're experiencing consistent performance out of inflow, uh, reapply at that five to 10 pounds per thousand square feet every three weeks. With that, I want to thank you for listening and spending some time learning about inflow and the benefits that it can provide for your infield skin maintenance program. 
And if you have any questions, you can use the email address below to uh, send your inquiries. Uh, you can also call us directly at our customer service. We have a direct line and then also a toll-free 1-800 line for the U.S. and Canada. And if you're interested in precision laboratories and soil surfactants and want to learn more, our website at precisionlab.com is a great resource to do that. Thanks again.